Good afternoon. Welcome to our virtual session of registration. And today the counselors are going to present some registration information that hopefully helps answer some questions and guides you through the registration process. And the registration process will um, continue by week, with the first week being our juniors, followed by our sophomores, and then our freshmen, and lastly, our eighth graders. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, but we hope you enjoy the video. Hi everyone, my name is Bethany Hotchkiss. I'm a Watertown High School counselor, and I cover last names A through G. Hi there, my name is Mrs. Fowkes, and I am one of the three counselors here in the Student Services Office. I am responsible for students in the alphabet group of H through O. However, if you are in the office and one of us is not available that you need to visit with, please know you can come to any of the three of us. We're all delighted to help in any fashion. I really enjoy the registration portion of your school year, as well as helping with any concerns or issues that you're dealing with on a given day. Again, this purpose was just to introduce myself, let you know who I am. If you see me wandering around, please point me in the right direction because I get lost very easily. And I am delighted to be here and I look forward to seeing each of you in the future. Have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is Heather Fisher. I'm one of the counselors at Watertown High School. I'm going to be talking to you today about some credit options as well as credit requirements um, for this registration session. So this is the WHS graduation requirements that we're going to go for over first. So these can be found in the registration book on page four. So at the top it does say it is the student's responsibility to know if all the requirements for graduation from high school or post high school education admissions are being met. It is also the student's responsibility to register for the courses required for each grade level. So, the Watertown Board of Education requires a little bit different than the State Board of Education. So we require four credits of English while the Board of Education requires three and a half. We also have the same speech debate, which is only half a credit. Math is three credits, science is three credits, social studies is three credits, fine arts is one. Um, health, is, health is also important. They should have taken that either in middle school, but if you have not taken it, um, we will take it eventually. Um, normally that would be through an apex course. We also require half a credit of PE and a half a credit of personal finance. One full credit of world language capstone or a CTE course and then seven and a half electives. So the total that we are looking at is gonna be 24 total credits if you scroll to the bottom of page four, it does say the ultimate responsibility for a proper registration rests with you, the student. I will do everything in my power to make sure that you are on track, but it is ultimately the student's responsibility to make sure that they have all their graduation requirements. Now we'll be talking about the high school and post-secondary curriculum requirements. So the South Dakota Opportunity Scholarship is what we're gonna be focusing on over here along with the President's Award for Educational Excellence. So the Ed President's Award is the most prestigious academic recognition bestowed upon the Watertown High School students. And the South Dakota Opportunity Scholarship provides scholarships over four years to attend an eligible higher ed institution in South Dakota. And this can be a two year or a four year university. Um, we have recently aligned the President's Award with the South Dakota Opportunity Scholarship since it changed a little bit. So I'll be going over that with you as well. So the main differences that we see here is that there are four credits of World Language CT or combination under the President's Award. Um, and for the Opportunity Scholarship, there's two credits of the same World Language CT or combination. So that's one of the big differences between it. Um, we also require the health for the Opportunity Scholarship as well. They also have different ACT score requirements. So there's a 26 requirement for the Presidential Award, and there is a 24 or higher for the Opportunity Scholarship. However, if you were to score a 28 or higher on the ACT, then 
you would qualify for the ST Opportunity Scholarship, no matter the credits in there. So if you, if you only had let's say three credits of science, but you got that 28 or higher, then you would be eligible for the Opportunity Scholarship. Hello again, this is Mrs. Fowkes, and I'm going to be visiting with you about advanced placement courses, as well as dual credit courses that students at Watertown High School can participate in. The first question that we're always asked is what is the difference between advanced placement classes as well as dual credit classes? And there are differences between the two without question. The main difference with the advanced placement courses is students sign up to take those with us here at our high school. And they are rigorous and they are college preparatory for every student that chooses to participate. So they're great classes to get you ready for life beyond high school. The issue with our advanced placement courses is you take the class for a full semester or you may even take it for three quarters and then at the end of the class you must take an AP exam. Even if you receive all A's throughout the course, you must receive a three or a four on your advanced placement exam. If you don't, you'll still get the high school credit but you will not get the college credit, which can be very disappointing. But that is the difference with our AP courses. You must take that exam to be able to get the dual credit, the actual credit. But again, you can get high school credit for taking the class, and you can take an AP class with not even taking the AP exam if that is your choice. Now, the, the other portion that's really exciting for our kids is you can take um, dual credit courses and those don't require that end of the year exam. Now I'm going to kind of scroll up here so I can get this information to you because this is my second time and the first time I didn't do this right. Dual credit courses are offered through Lake Area, Area Technical College, they're offered through Mount Marty, they're offered through Watertown High School, and they're also offered through all the state universities and other te technical colleges in the state of South Dakota. Students need to register for those courses so they can get involved and get ready to get credit both at the college level and at the high school level. That's why they're called dual credit. You get both high school credit as well as college credit or university credit and they count in both locations. You can't pick and choose where you want it to land. So you must do it that way that's a rule that they put into place recently. The other thing with dual credit courses are there are certain standards you must meet to be allowed to take them. Now some dual credit courses are offered right here on Watertown High School campus. Other dual credit courses are, can be taken on the campus of Lake Area Technical College. Other dual credit courses are offered here in our building as well, but they're through Mount Marty. And then we have other courses that you can take online. One of the best things about our COVID shutdown was it kind of let students learn what type of a learner they are. If you're someone that's self-disciplined and can meet different deadlines and things online on your own, you would be a great dual credit candidate. If you're somebody that kind of needs that classroom structure, online dual credit courses may not be calling your name. And sometimes you just have to learn that as you go. Again, as far as being able to take dual credit coursework, there are certain standards students must meet. For example, juniors, you must have a 24 ACT score to be able to take some dual credit classes. Now I know of late a lot of times students are discouraged from taking the ACT in their junior year. I don't know if I totally agree with that. I think taking the ACT your junior year can be very beneficial because it can open up a lot of opportunities for certain students with different coursework. The other thing is, is you can take the ACT more than once and what ACT is now doing is super scoring. So students that take the, the test twice, they get a better English score on their first test but they get a better math score on the second test, they can take those best scores, ACG puts it together and gives you what's called a super score. So that's a wonderful opportunity for our kids. 
To be able to take dual credit courses as a junior, as I said before, you must have an ACT composite score of 24 or be in the upper one-third of your class rank or have a cumulative grade point average of 3.5 or earn a qualifying score on the Accuplacer. Something that we don't have on here that also will qualify you for dual credit courses as a junior is your pre-ACT exam score. We give the pre-ACT to our sophomores. We'll be doing that in April. And the nice thing about that is if you pay attention to it, if you give it your best shot, it's not a test to just blow off because it can, again, open doors for you to take upper-level courses to help you with those final bills of college, college um, debt when you, when you leave us. Now, for seniors, the, the requirements drop a little bit. They're not quite as tough. So as a senior, then if you want to take dual credit, you need an ACT score of 21. And again, remember, you can do those super scores. You need to be in the upper one half of your class. You need to have a cumulative GPA of 3.25, or you need to earn a qualifying score on the Accuplacer. These are all one of these. The other thing that we don't have on here is smarter balance scores also will allow you to take dual credit courses. So if you score a three in the English, and a three in the math, you are eligible to take dual credit coursework. Now again, we offer a lot of different dual credits here at our high school. It's in our registration book, so I would really encourage you to look that over. The nice thing about dual credit is, with the AP, if you take the exam, the exam is about $97. And that's for the three credits, if you score well enough. For dual credit, where you don't have to take the exam, you just take the class, get the grade that you earn, those courses cost $144.99. Now, I'm going to be lazy and round up. I'm going to say $145, plus any books that you need to purchase for that particular class. So that's not bad at all, because when you leave us and become a college student or a technical college student, those costs can can go up by five times. I mean, it's really pretty crazy. And sometimes students can leave us and have a full semester done as a freshman in college. And I've had students get their entire freshman year done and part of their sophomore year. So it's not to wipe out that much. It can lessen your load as a college student so you're not stressing as much about some of those courses. It's just a great opportunity to get ahead and save some money because you're not having to pay that $900 to $1,200 for one three credit class at the university or college or tech college level. Um, there are a lot of courses that are available. I know there's a lot of confusion with the type of courses. What I would like to suggest is just come in and talk to us. I love doing this. I think it is so much fun. I think it's great to look at the different courses. Basically, what these courses are is to help high school students prepare for college by getting a lot of your general education courses out of the way. Colleges and universities and tech schools have gen ed courses. And what those are, are those are basic courses everybody must take. The college level, university level, you have to have English composition. Some students are already getting that here through one of our um, dual credit AP courses. If you haven't done that yet, you can take those courses at Lake Area, here, or online. But they only cost the $144, $145. The nice thing is with dual credit courses that are taught at Watertown High School, you don't have to pay for the materials because you have the teacher right here in front of you and you have someone in front of you to answer your questions. You can go to with additional help if you need it and you don't have to worry about maybe procrastinating so much. Again, with the online, that can create some challenges for students. So you just have to know what type of learner you are. Parents, you need to know what type of learner your child is or your student, and so they can make the best decisions possible. Again, if you have questions, please come and see us because there are different ways to try to help you qualify as a student to take dual credit courses. 
as well as to get into our AP courses. Just remember, it's rigorous. It's university, college, technical college level, and so you need to be willing to bite on that to get yourself ahead. Should you have any questions, again, please let us know. And thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. Hello. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some core content requirements as well as some elective options um, for students. And so we're going to first start in the English section. So this is the page in the registration book. It's page number 11 if you want to reference um, these as we go. For your English options, every grade has the option to do an accelerated or an, a non-accelerated track. I will tell you the biggest difference um, from accelerated between accelerated and non-accelerated has to do with pace. Um, they cover a lot of the same materials. It's just the accelerated classes go a little bit faster. They are a great option to set students up um, in their upper level English classes to be able to take the advanced um, AP uh, Lang as a junior or AP Lit as a senior. If you look down at the science requirements, um, all freshmen will take biology and all sophomores will take physical science. And then they need one other science elective um, that they can choose that will meet their science requirement for graduation. Many scholarships as well as um, like awards, honors and awards require four. So I would just encourage you and your student to um, look over kind of what your what your goal is or what their goal is and um, also for the chemistry advanced chemistry and environmental science are two science classes that are offered as dual credit chemistry is on an every other year basis so you'll just want to ensure that your student checks to see if chemistry is going to be offered for the year that they're registering for and then environmental science is all, all also an option uh, for dual credit. Now the student can take the class without earning the dual credit. Um, they just need to complete a form, but it's the same, the same class for both. In the math requirements, um, students will need algebra one in some form, geometry, and then algebra two. Those are the three math requirements for high school graduation. Many of the scholarships and awards will require four, so it's important that the student visit with their counselor to figure out what is the next best math step for them. We do offer a college algebra that students can earn for dual credit, and so that will be um, something that they'll be able to work towards. And if you want to reference the math section uh, more in depth to kind of know, uh, you can follow the flow chart to see what their next, the student's next math option might be. We're going to move on to page 12, which is the social studies. Again, each of the um, requirements by grade has an accelerated or a non-accelerated option. You'll notice if you look over here in the credit requirement, the biggest difference between accelerated or non-accelerated has to do with the amount of credit earned as well as the time spent in the class. So for example, world geography would only be a half a credit and it's only a quarter class. And accelerated world geography is a full credit for a full semester. So that's probably the biggest difference um, in the accelerated versus the non-accelerated track. Once you get to like AP US History, AP Government, um, those classes are going to be offered for a, um, a full year or, a, or three quarters if you look at AP US History. And so that's something that the student can talk to their counselor a little bit more in depth just to see exactly how it's going to fit into their schedule. The social studies electives um, are listed there for you. The um, classes, some of the classes do go on a rotating schedule. And so America at War alternates with historical figures every other year. And then philosophy A and philosophy B are offered on alternating years. And so based on what's offered in the current year that you're registering for, um, you'll know what's available to you. If you chose the non-accelerated path for the social studies um, category, you'll just need to have 
uh, the student will need to have an extra social studies elective at some point over their four years in high school. So that's just something to keep in mind. For the fine art requirement, students can earn that with a music credit or going the fine art route and taking some art classes. Now, um, introduction to art is kind of the segue class. That's a prerequisite for every other art class. So just kind of keep that in mind um, moving forward or, you know, kind of depending on what the path is. The only thing that is not a prerequisite um, that doesn't require intro to art for a prerequisite is intro to audio production. And that's a newer class that we've recently added. Um, and it does count as a fine art requirement, but doesn't require the art, the intro to art prereq. Physical education, um, students need a half of credit of physical education at some point over their four years in high school. So that's one PE class. They earn down here where it says their health um, education. They earn that with their PE class that they take in middle school. If students are transferring into the district um, after middle school, that might be, need to be something they talk with their counselor about to make sure that they get their health credit in. Now we're gonna move on to some elective options that students can choose from. We have some computer science classes, some business classes, there's some um, Northeast Tech classes down here that students can choose as electives. It's important to know that in order to graduate from Watertown High School, students do not need a world language elective, or they, they, they do not need a world language requirement. They would strictly take those world language classes as elective. They do, however, just need one credit of CTE or world language in that category, but it does not have to be um, a, a world language class. They can, they can strictly take CTE and earn credit for that category. If you look down to the Northeast Tech and CTE box, you'll notice that these are all of the Northeast Tech options that students have to register. Now this registration process is a little bit different from traditional registration in that it goes by grade and so juniors will always register first, then sophomores, followed by freshmen, and then eighth graders. Um, they register via email and so students will get sent an email with a Google form that they'll complete. That Google form is time stamped and they'll indicate all of the classes that they are uh, requesting and then it's a first come first serve basis based on seniority. And so if your student is really frustrated because maybe they haven't gotten into the classes that they've wanted to, just know that it does get easier as they get older because they register um, sooner and sooner every single year. That concludes some of the things that we wanted to make sure everybody was aware of. And so if you have any further questions or concerns or you want to visit with your counselor, maybe you want to encourage your student to visit with your counselor, we would be happy to help. Just come and see us anytime. Thanks.